everybody and welcome to the University of Adelaide. Um, I'm Edna Harris, I'm manager of Art and Heritage Collections and it is my absolutely my delight to welcome you all here. This is a collaborative project uh, and a workshop between Art and Heritage Collections and the Confucius Institute. <coughs> and it's, it's one of those moments when we bring ourselves to think about other cultures, people coming to Australia and generally reflecting on, on um, various cultural traditions and <coughs> ideas that we all bring uh, here. And with that in mind, I'd like to get us all to think about the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains, on whose land and whose connections we very much appreciate and recognise. And the university campuses Rosewood, Theberton, Wake and on Terrace are placed on. So every time we start thinking about our cultural things, we also reflect on that because <coughs> the, the connection with the land and with the culture is extremely important for all of us. And today we're really talking about another kind of connection and that's the connection between art and heritage collections uh, and we look after the collections of the university, so we, we manage about 25 collections out of 39 that the university has. And one of the collections that is rapidly growing is the Guild Collection. And it is through that connection between art and heritage collections and um, Pro Arch Chancellor International and him getting on his gifts at the beginning when this role was first established. And John Tappen, Professor John Tappen, who was the, the first Pro Arch Chancellor International, um, it is through this kind of nexus of gifts, cultural uh, ideas that, that we came to start partnering the Confucius. So today is a really a nice, nice way to come together because we have kind of the original guard and then there is the new guard of the Confucius Institute. And I'll invite Aaron Duff, who is the Executive Officer of uh, the Confucius Institute currently, to say a few words about what the Confucius Institute does. Thanks, Anna. Um, thanks again also to everybody for coming in to this afternoon today. Um, together with uh, Arts and Heritage, Confucius uh, Institute is very uh, happy, very pleased to uh, co-host this event for uh, a number of uh, past staff, uh, current staff and uh, strong partners. And uh, this afternoon when we're talking with these people, you find each of them have got a very interesting story to tell. Um, just a little bit about the Confucius Institute, the University of Adelaide, for those of you who don't know, um, we were established in 2007, is that right, John? That's right. Um, and we work across the whole of South Australia in terms of uh, encouraging and promoting South Australians to pick up Chinese language, um, learn about Chinese culture, but also working with uh, local governments, the state government, and also businesses across the state to become more China literate. So helping, for example, businesses become China ready, in terms of uh, trade, import, export, um, receiving investment from China. Um, we do a lot of work with schools in terms of uh, cultural workshops, uh, introducing Chinese language programs with the schools, uh, Chinese, Chinese language proficiency testing, uh, a lot of that work. And uh, it's in this capacity that Zhao so Zhao originally joined us uh, from Shandong University. Um, I'll leave the story for several hours to tell you But um, that's a quick overview of our institute here. We're very happy to, to be here today. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to learning more about what these people have to say along the rest of it. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Um, I, um, I thought we'd start by inviting, by just sort of painting a picture. Uh, Glenn, um, tell me. I'm painting a picture by introducing everybody on the panel first and I'll invite them to just say a couple of few words about themselves and what they did and then Glenn and I will start talking about our uh, original collection and, and dreams that we had for the cultural kind of 
activities. <coughs> so, Annette, shall we start with you? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Annette. Um, I used to be the business program uh, manager of the Computers Institute for a little of over four years um, until July this year. Um, it was a very important um, period in my life because also I was a migrant I'm from Europe originally. So this gave me sort of a little bit of family and a grounding in, in Adelaide and I really enjoyed uh, those four years. Um, I'm now working for the International Student Center here, um, designing and I'll be managing a program of really um, connecting international students with the community. Uh, my name is Ruggiero Rego and I'm a Languages Consultant with the Catholic Education Office. Um, and I guess I'm here because of my connection uh, to um, someone that I consider to be a friend of mine, even though we only met <laughs> four years ago. Um, anyway, my, uh, my background is Portuguese, came to Australia many years ago um, as a languages teacher, uh, taught different languages here in Adelaide in government and Catholic schools. And um, I'm uh, currently a languages consultant with Catholic Ed, and my job is to assist principals and teachers um, to implement and support um, good quality languages programs that goes across the board, Asian and European languages. But lately, um, my interests have been turning a little bit towards Asia, and in order to become Asia literate, I think I started by becoming China literate. Um, um, Xiao Zhao Li um, came to Adelaide in 2010, was one of the two first um, so-called internship volunteer teachers um, of the Confucius Institutes in Adelaide. Um, I think we don't, still don't have many in the Confucius Institutes here, but there are many of us in all the other countries. Um, we, together with my, I, together with my colleagues, uh, started this um, culture workshop programs and um, I did like, they trust me a lot. So they gave me different tasks to do. So and now I'm sort of, like, I finished my internship, which lasted for three years. <laughs> um, and now I'm um, a project officer at the Confucius Institute um, doing students activities. Okay, I'm Glenn. Um, I was the lucky first staff of the Confucius Institute. As as executive officer um, when it was first set up way back in the middle of 2007 and um, stayed with it until earlier this year when I moved off to work in, um, in a global engagement office here at the university. Um, and so I've seen a lot of the Confucius Institute being very lucky to work with everybody up here and at um, this stage it's just delightful to see not just with people like Sergio and Annette in particular here but all of the staff we've had over in the Confucius Institute over the years have gone off and um, built on their experience and the skills that they've developed in the Confucius Institute and now doing bigger and better things all over the city and, and indeed all over the world as well. So, as um, we've seen, such as a brilliant example of that. Um, I suppose thinking about how we all came together, uh, when you were a new kid on the block, you have to actually do something to engage broader community. Otherwise, you could just sit in your office for a long time and nobody would know that you are there and you get your pay and you go home and you'd be very happy. But you might not necessarily make any uh, impact on anybody around you. And Art and Heritage Collections, when we first started in 2004, we were in that position of thinking, what are we going to do? We know we have collections, we know we've got to look after them, so there's a lot of behind the scenes things that you need to do. But you also need to reach out and create some kind of um, conduit to talk to people that are interested in the same things that you're interested in. Um, so we started working on a cultural program and focusing on various as as aspects of the collection. And that gave us a name um, of a kind of keen people to do all kinds of things and anything that could be exciting. And this is how Glenn and I came together because we had a stream, never-ending stream of gifts coming from John's office through Iris to be uh, accessioned and they were, you know, um, 
and in, there's a few ethnic people here, and we, we, we know that there is this tradition of gift giving and making sure that you know what's given. And I, I understand in Chinese culture that is very strong too. So we had a lot of Chinese gifts. So that, that made us, that brought us up to closer together. And then the Confucius Institute was established and Glenn came on the scene. And we started talking cultural programs. So Glenn, where were you coming from at that point? What were you thinking? Well, about? the first cultural program. Um, that for a little bit. Um, so when we started in the middle of 2007, um, it was not just early days for this Confucius Institute, but it was early days for Confucius Institutes around the world. We were, I think, the third one in Australia, perhaps? Yeah. Second or second. Second or third. So we were pretty new. We needed to find our feet. And um, I don't need to go into all the story, but we, we, our, our model here was a little bit different. It wasn't a lot of activity that was set up, okay, go and teach Chinese or, or something like that, like, like Confucius normally do that, that ground that this university was taken and and we've got a very proud strong tradition of teaching Chinese in the Center for Asian Studies since the 1970s so Confucius Institute can't come along and, and, and do that as they do in other places but soon after we started we had an amazing opportunity um, through um, John's office the contact um, was made with a, an artist from southern China Mr. Wu Changi and I think as, as we reflect on him every now and again, we have wonderful memories of that time. He, he came and was stayed with us for I think around six weeks or so, quite, quite some time. And it was the first activity of the Confucius Institute was to, bring, to, to host him as an artist in residence. But what did that mean? What, what did we do with him to, um, to share his skill and his experience? And what did we do with a random Chinese artist for six weeks in Adelaide? Work with Miriam, and we and in that in that six weeks we had a, two or three um, workshop sessions for for the university community for the community in South Australia. But the real success of that was what we did with schools. We reached out to schools in Adelaide who teach Chinese, and schools more broadly as well. And we said, look, we've got an artist here. We can take him to your school, we can let your children experience <coughs> learning Chinese, not learning um, Chinese art. And Mr. Wu was a, is a fantastic calligrapher and ink painter, and a poet, and just a, one of those real arty kinds of guys. And so we took him out to school. He, he had not a word of English, maybe one, two, <laughs> or maybe two, two, probably hello and Thank you. <laughs> um, and so we had to work out a program, had to work out um, how to bring his art to, to our students. And so we worked with some of our Chinese students and, and myself to try to um, interpret for him. And in the, in the first few weeks, we, we put it out to the teachers and we got a little bit of response. But as time went by, as, as teachers learned that what he was doing was good value. We were just booked up and booked up and booked up. So towards the end of it, we had, I don't know how many workshops every day, every day of the week. And the kids loved it. For the, for the kids, and we did it from five-year-olds through to year 12, so the full range. With Chinese ink painting, as such as some of those things up there, when it's done by a master, it just appears on the page. Wonderful fluid strokes and just right in front of the kids, right in front of the adult as well. Mm -hmm. These one wonderful pieces of art would just magically appear. And in the hands of a master, it's just so impressive. So impressive. And the kids loved it. And of course they then got to learn how to hold the brush and do the do the painting um, themselves as well. And, and that was that was the first um, major activity that, that we put on and uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students experienced that and and for me for, for all of us it showed that there's a real need in the community to give kids an opportunity to experience these things um, for those of us who work um, in the area sort of seems a little bit natural but for the kids that never seen it before and 
and there's, there's clear interest, clear excitement about being able to be involved. It was a, a very, very good early lesson. And, and it allowed us also to introduce to the university what this kind of cultural program that a cultural bent could actually bring to the university. Because you always have to think, what does it mean for us? Why are we doing it? Um, how can we build on it? And this was fantastic. And just like today that we have a, a, an exhibition here, uh, we had Mr. Wu's uh, artworks on display for about a month, uh, five weeks. So people could come and have a look. Um, and I suppose your the idea with the interns then, how did that kind of make it into the program? So, so the Gardens and Residence program finished, and then we went on about the other business of developing the Confucius Institute and, and working on all of the areas that Aaron talked about at the beginning that, that are really important that we, we pursued. As time went on, an opportunity from China came, and that, that was to get um, young student types from China, volunteers as they're called, to come out and work with us. And being the never say no kind of Confucius Institute that, um, that we, we were and still are, I suppose, um, and with the offer of free labor um, given to us, we didn't say no. Yes, sign us up. Um, send us people to, to work with us. And we were, and in every instance, have been incredibly lucky to get incredibly talented um, people, and not just the other, um, in the gallery, in the audience as well um, today. And and so we, in 2009, we went through the process. I think you were interviewed. Yeah, I'm not by you. Not by me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and even better, it shows impartiality. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then in 2010, um, shut up and he come. Yeah. Um, the first groundbreaking volunteer interns arrived. Um, now, the program is, is an interesting one. What, what are they doing here? What, who sends them here? Who pays for them? Um, it's quite Confucius Institutes, I mean, many people here are familiar with the Confucius Institutes are, are funded by the Chinese, are partially funded by the Chinese government, by a part of the Ministry of Education called the Han Fan, the Chinese offices. And they provide some of our funds and they provide some activities. And one of their programs is to, to send young um, student types, interns, all around the world, mostly to teach Chinese. And so they, they pay a pittance of a salary. Yeah. Um, to, to <laughs> Yeah, it's um, <laughs> And so they, they, they send them out to work with us. We, we apply, and then through our partner university, Shandong University, um, they help us select people who would um, be really good in the roles. And then we interview and make, make a good selection. Now, I don't know whether it is the interviewing uh, has just managed to choose good people, or whether Shandong is just a lovely place which produces lots and lots of lovely people. But we've been very lucky. We've, um, we've, we've, we've done well, which is quite a different situation from the other Confucius Institutes who've been up after that. Um, and so, so we work with Shandong University in Hanbang, and as part of that global Chinese volunteer intern program, we, we have our volunteers. The best way to think about, a, a, about the program is like, um, in Australia we send out volunteers to developing countries. We can remember the old Australian volunteers abroad, or volunteers international, that kind of program, where we take our, our people with some skills and experience, go out and assist developing areas. It's basically the same thing. We are underdeveloped in our understanding of China, our understanding of Chinese, and we have people who are skilled in helping us um, build up our understanding, come out and work. Chichao, tell us a bit about <coughs> How did you, what prompted you to engage in this? Like, um, that's the other side of this story. Um, okay, we received this piece of paper saying you can register yourself as an applicant to go overseas for Confucius Institutes. You have a list of countries to choose. We didn't know which city of the country we were going. And then we had, like, for us from Shenzhen University, we had 
of course, Australia, we had France, we had Singapore, and there are many, so many other countries, and I chose Australia. I didn't know I was coming to Adelaide, and it turned out to be lucky that I was coming here. Um, I love this little city. Um, but before I, before I applied for this program, like, I, I was doing my master's, my first year master's, and I was doing an undergraduate from Zhejiang University, which is far away from home. I came back to Zhejiang University, which is my, like, in my hometown, and I was born in the, in the first year. And so my supervisor said, um, shall I go overseas and go to see the world? And so I brought my house down and was applying for exchange program study. And then it turned out to be this work opportunity. Although, like Glenn said, I understand and pay, but you know, I don't have to spend money, and it's good work opportunity, like experience, so I applied. And you know how competitive it is in China with such a large population. They got 2,000 people uh, applying for these many opportunities, and the first like, written exam, written exam, and a thousand failed. And then left like this. Asked people went for the interview by hand then by Confucius headquarters. So that's why Glenn didn't know us at all. Right. So we were very excited to come. I still can remember. I came with Singapore Airlines and uh, we landed in Adelaide. A very good spring, and I could see Glenn Elk from 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 the plane. And then we arrived, and these people didn't know what we should do. <laughs> in, in, in other Confucian institutes, you know, go to teach Chinese. You are a native speaker, like practice Chan Chinese, but we didn't have Chinese here. So I remember my fir first task with my um, other colleague, Lee Kang, was um, to organize the books. We had a little library in our office, actually with many books, so we sort of put them like, in each catalog and we organized with different numbers and put them back. That was my first task. And then because I was so efficient, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> every task every task Glenn gave to me I could, you know, I could actually finish it with a very short time and I would hear we go me again, Glenn, what what else can I do? And he was very annoyed. <laughs> and then we had sort of started this program because we had this um, um, Mr. Wu uh, experience before and I could do Chinese painting, that's part of the reasons Han Ben chose me to come here. And, and so we, uh, we thought, you know, why don't you like send us to schools? So uh, me and Lee Kang, the other girl, we visited like many, many schools from the beginning. Um, we didn't really have you know, it's a new program, so we didn't really have very good facilities, transportations. Mm -hmm. I still do remember <laughs> me and Lee Kang going to Salisbury High School by train, and then at Salisbury Interchange, change the bus to the high school. And if you couldn't find the bus back, bad luck. <laughs> and um, yeah, we, we sort of reached very, like, many schools, but by then we had Chinese painting because I could do it. We had uh, calligraphy because both of us could do it. We had uh, paper cutting. Um, and then later on, uh, Lee Kang was very good at crafting, so she developed uh, this Chinese noting. And then she went back home uh, in 2011, early 2011, because she finished her contract. It's like one year contract. You can extend it for three years. Like me, I extended for three years. And um, so she went back home. We had um, another volunteer, intern volunteer teacher coming. And um, Zhou Ying was uh, very good at Jinju Chinese Opera. So we developed a Chinese Opera workshop. And then as you know, time goes on, we had new people coming. And we find very good at Chinese music. So we had new music program and Tai Chi program. And, and after now, we've reached like 60 more than 60 schools in South Australia, and two or three, I don't know really um, the exact number of the students, um, but more than 2,000, I would say. Each, each year. Yeah. Well, you know, they read, read book us, so we've probably been to the same school and saw the same students. Um, but like each year, and we've been to, um, not only reading athletes, um, like by this good opportunity also for us to see real Australia. 
We've been to countryside, we've been to Tumbi Bay area school, where they have, like, the first time when the teacher, the teacher is from Oakland Access, she's teaching Chinese, but she's English. And she told us, she said, Xiao Zhang, I have to have my children to see an Asian face. Um, so I went there to show my Asian face. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we did workshops. And we've been to Mount Gambia um, many times by, uh, like, with Jared's support. And they have the schools over there. And so, yeah, that's like how, that's from my eyes, how we developed this um, program. And, how we learned it. We, love, we, we definitely love, love this place. It's a, it's a lovely office, and it's like, it was my home when I first came here. Um, I do remember, you know, sort of the, those forms ask you, like, your emergency contact. <laughs> so I'm asking, can I feel in Confucius Institute or one of you? I don't know really. I don't really know other people. Yeah, and we, um, when we go out, we will always know that there's Confucius Institute at the back. And yeah, that was the first few years when we came here. Yes. So, Najera, what role did you play in all of this? Obviously, through the Catholic Ed, you might have channeled them somewhere in the far flung places of the state, but I understand you you came across Jojo before she came here. Um, that's right. So, I think our <coughs> partnership started in 2009 when. I first went with um, Professor um, Mobokel to China as part of the school leaders um, tour. And whilst there, we thought that would be a fantastic idea if we could um, make that sort of opportunity available to teachers as well. Um, at that stage, Chinese was not one of our largest programs. Uh, I'm talking about Catholic Ed, which has a tradition with, uh, obviously, the Italian language, connections with um, Rome, etc. And at that stage, we thought that um, perhaps trying to change the Eurocentric view of our curriculum in schools to incorporate Asian perspectives will be what was coming. And the year after that, then, there was a much greater focus coming from the federal government to start including Asian perspectives across the curriculum. <clears throat> so um, in 2010, um, I went to, uh, to China with a group of 10 teachers from Catholic and independent schools, um, and I spoke no Chinese. So uh, in negotiations with Confucius Institute and Glenn at that stage and Annette, I thought maybe um, while the teachers are immersed at uh, university um, lectures, I could have some basic conversation classes. And um, then I said, okay, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> and we arrived in Jinan, and uh, teachers started their, their week-long uh, series of lectures at uh, university. <clears throat> and I was assigned um, this university student that would um, be charged with trying to teach me some Chinese. And that's how I met Chao Chao. Uh, <laughs> she was chosen, or she volunteered, I'm not sure. How to put it. <laughs> Um, so when teachers used to go in the morning to universities, Tao and I would sit in a cafe or on a park bench at university, and um, I know that um, she was a little bit apprehensive about, my God, I've never done this before, <laughs> where am I going to teach? <laughs> <laughs> so there was a, a lot of um, personal growing between the two of us that I had to um, learn from you and you had to learn how to teach. <laughs> Chinese, which was a fantastic experience. And that's why my um, association, I suppose, with Chao Chao, um, this was on two levels, the personal and, and the professional. Um, when we came back, um, then I had a conversation at uh, the Catholic Education Office um, about the need to increase the number of programs of Chinese uh, in our schools. And um, um, I've said a few times before that I'm very happy to say that in the last three years we have doubled the number of programs and um, the association that we have with the Confucius Institute um, is definitely one of the factors that we were able to not only um, find teachers to, to, find, uh, to teach Chinese in our schools, but also in terms of taking or providing principals and the school leaders and teachers the opportunity to go to China, experience China. Um, and we have made it very clear with the Confucius Institute and um, it's a reciprocal um, philosophy that we want people to go and experience China. 
<clears throat> as part of experiencing and knowing more about Asia. Um, so the, the school-based focus um, was one of the key factors in sending people overseas. Uh, and then we want them to come back and actually tell us or tell their schools. I have been to China and uh, all the preconceived ideas that I had about China, about Asia, half of them, if not most of them, have gone, gone out of the window and we need to start as a staff. We need to start experiencing so we know more about it and so we can then relay that knowledge to our students. That's basically what has been happening for the last um, uh, few years. And when I was in Jinan in 2010, I didn't know that Chao Chao was going to come to Adelaide. Um, so then it was a very pleasant surprise to um, find out that she was working with the Confucius Institute. Uh, and four years later, we still, as a group of teachers that went overseas, um, we still um, get together and we tend to go out. <laughs> this was a, a pact, I suppose, that we made. When we go back to Australia and we go out together, you will not go to a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> you need to. <laughs> um, I'm sure we all enjoy going to different places, so we have, and that's what we know. And that's perhaps um, the expanding of ideas and, and um, exchange of information and, and Sometimes they don't agree on things, but that's the way, that's what intercultural education is all about. We listen and we learn and people think differently and we accept and live and promote difference. So that has been my association. And since then, just to finish that up, I know that Sir Zhao and Lin Fang and Zhao Bai have also been doing an amazing amount of work with our schools. Um, and I know it's not always easy to go and spend a day with students that you've never met before all work with um, five or six different classes. But the feedback that um, I'm sure you, Aaron, uh, has received and we have received is that the way that they face and they talk to students is something that we would be very proud to have them as teachers. Well, thank you for that, Joe. No, Annette, you're kind of a business manager type, so you're sitting a bit, um, a little bit away from the, the schools and the students. So, so what are your thoughts about the interns, the arts, and on the, all of that kind of schools program? Well, first of all, yes, I, I was responsible then my second year when Jen came back. I was responsible for building up the business program. But I must say, we always were a very small and tight team. Um, um, in, in, in the, at the Confucius Institute. And so we always pitched in. We always, nobody only did one thing. We did many things at the same time and together. And so I was really also not as much involved, of course, as, as Ben, but I always was involved also with the cultural side, which is a very important um, side um, to the promotion of Chinese culture. And what I did mainly in the 